Welcome back everybody to the Zenith Super Duty Build. I think this is episode number 52, and I have kind of a bunch of little things that I'm going to start working on. It's things that I've been putting off for a while that I just need to get done so that I can move on. What I actually did was erase everything on my list and I started over with a new list of my top priorities. So the first thing on the list is I need to mount these Dynon AHARS units. And I did show this on a previous video, but I made this mount here that gets riveted to the inside bottom of the fuselage. And you can see that it rotates. And the reason why I have it rotating is because when this is mounted, this needs to be level in the fuselage. And since the, the tail kind of slopes up, this lets me mount it and then adjust it how I need it. And I can even make fine adjustments after the airplane's flying. And once I find it, or once I get it in a good position, I just tighten these bolts and it locks it in place. So I need to get this mount mounted in the fuselage. Second on the list is the aft fuselage, the rudder mounts. And you can see I have the plans open up, opened up to that page. And these are the parts that I'm going to need. And so first, I'm just going to start by cleaning up all these parts. I'll polish the edge of this big thick plate. I've actually already done it to these, I think. Uh, some of these holes might need drilled out to a larger size. I'm not sure yet. I know these ones do. Uh, so when I do that step, I'll use this page of the plans. But I would like to get all this stuff mounted so I could start riveting up the back of the fuselage. All right, torque tube control stick. Now that is this big white tube that goes through here. And you can see the, the stick attaches to that. On the front of this tube uh, goes this little piece right here. And then there's a bolt that goes through and this hangs down on the bottom. And what this piece does is it goes back and forth when you, when you move the ailerons. And there's a bolt that goes in these I can get the camera in there. You can see this U bracket here. There's bolts that go in here, and those are basically the aileron stops. So I need to add all of that, and then I can kind of permanently mount the torque tube. And finally on the list is to mount the horizontal stabilizer. Well, back in the corner of the hangar is the horizontal stabilizer, and it is done and complete, but it does need to get mounted here. And if you remember from a previous episode, I mentioned that I didn't finish riveting these plates in here, just in case I screw up the holes in here that mount the horizontal stabilizer. But what I need to do is get the fuselage leveled. And then once it's leveled, I can put the horizontal stabilizer in here, get the horizontal stabilizer leveled, and then drill the mounting holes. I'd like to get this back end completely done. That's why I want to get that done. And then those rudder mounting brackets go on here. And then once that's done, the whole back end of the airplane will be finished up. Now, the, the last thing I have to do that's not on my whiteboard list is to install these pieces. And I just got these painted yesterday. So I'm probably going to wait another day just to let them fully cure. They're pretty dry now. But let me show you in the fuselage where these pieces go. All right, those are the pieces that close up this uh, bulkhead or whatever you want to call it right here. And that's where the fuel lines run. So here's the fuel line here. And you can see it's sitting back here. It gets put up into here like this. And then those pieces I just showed you go on to there. And then they get riveted all down the side here. And then that's the last holes on the outside of the fuselage they get riv that gets riveted there. So once I put those on, I can tuck away those fuel lines. I'll put both sides left and right on there, and that will be complete. Now, since I'm going to put those on, I wanted to get my door mounts ready to go. So what I did yesterday was I, on my grinder, I rounded the corners on, on all these, just so they're not you know, a 90 degree corner. Uh, I primed them and painted them. And I had to drill the holes. And to drill the holes, 
you can see where these things mount right here like that on those two holes. So what I do is I drilled the first hole, I clecoed it on, actually clecoed it on the back, and then with a Sharpie, I marked the hole, took it off, drilled both holes. So now these are ready to go. And I wanted to get these drilled before I put on those green channels that go on here, because once, they're, once those are installed, you can't get to the holes back here to, to mark the holes. So I wanted to get those marked and drilled. Once I did that, I primed and painted both of these pieces. So I can actually probably just rivet these on now. Well, that was a long, boring overview of where I'm at, but I just kind of wanted to show you the list of steps that I wrote out that I want to do. So let's get started. I'm going to work on getting the back end or the rudder mounts done first. So I'm taking this big quarter inch thick piece of aluminum and really kind of cleaning up the edges. After the scotch bright wheel, I finish up with 400 grit sandpaper and it just helps polish the edges and kind of break the corners. And you can see the difference here between a polished edge and when I flip it over, you'll see how it was before I started. You can kind of see the grooves or the rough edge here. All right, so I have the outside edge of this done now, but obviously this curve right here, I can't get with my big uh, scotch bright wheel. I do have a smaller one that would fit in here nicely and do it, but I think what I'm going to try first is this little sanding disc here. I'm gonna see how well this works to get rid of the big, uh, the big grooves on there and I can touch it up with sandpaper. Using this sanding disc actually worked really well. It gets a really nice polished surface, pretty much the same as that Scotch-Brite wheel did. So this worked really nice. I'm kind of happy with the results. I just wanted to show you, this is the page in the manual where it talks about installing these pieces. So it references this page of the plans and then it tells us the first couple steps here and you can see that uh, 75 FR10 is the page in the plans. We have these pieces in the back. There's that top big piece that I just worked on. And this page combined with, it looks like this page, has some info on how to mount this. So let's go back to the airplane and we'll go step by step through here and get these plates at least test fit for now. Before I actually put them on the airplane, I might as well clean up all the edges and prepare all of these pieces. So I'm just fouling the edges smooth on this little uh, kind of triangle piece. And once I foul the edges smooth, I round the corners and then I'll touch it up with sandpaper just to really clean it up. And then this piece will be ready to go. Before I go to the back of the airplane and clico everything together, you can see that these mounting holes here where the rivets go, are going to be A5 rivets. So now that I've cleaned this plate up and polished the edges, I've drilled this out for A5 rivets. And you can see in these two pieces, uh, the holes are drilled, but they're not final size. So I'm going to open up these five holes in both of these pieces uh, to fit an A5 rivet. That way everything's final size and I can go back and clico it together. together that is, is Clico together. Now these four holes here on each side, these are the rivets that get, or the holes that get riveted into here. And right now they're drilled for A4s. So let's look on the plans and see if they're A4s or A5s. Here it is right here on the plans, four rivets, A5. So these four holes on both sides, I need to drill out to fit an A5 rivet. I just did these first three steps, so I've put a check mark in the box, meaning it's installed or done. 
All I'm doing here is opening up these eight holes. There's four on each side that need opened up for the A5 rivet size. So once that's done, I can take it apart, prime the pieces, and it is ready to install. It is done, it's installed, it's riveted together. It's really nice and solid. And the top piece here, it's temporarily installed. I'm not going to bolt it in just yet because I want to prime it and paint it separately from the airplane. So once the airplane's painted and this is painted, then I can bolt it together. You can see right now, it's just in there with some non-locking nuts. And because I wanted it installed so that I can install the rudder later to check the fit or run the rudder cables or whatever I need to do. I have the steel bushing in here. And the only way I could get that in was to put the bushing in the freezer and then tap it in with a hammer. So it's never coming out, but I wanted a nice tight fit. And if it ever develops wear, if I ever have play in the rudder, and I have to replace that, I think it would probably be easier just to replace this whole piece. So I'll just take the bolts out, take this off and get another one because I'm not sure I'll be able to tap that back out. But anyway, it's a nice tight fit and I wanted it tight because I don't want any slop or play in the rudder. Well, that was nice to get something done. I can now cross this off the list. I think the next thing I'm going to do which is the quickest and easiest is probably mount this, mount the, the mount for the AHARs. So I'll get that mounted in the fuselage next. All right, for my next magic trick, I will install this in the airplane. And this is actually pretty simple to do. I just have to match drill these four holes in the bottom skin and mount it. And since it gets mounted on the inside of the airplane, I really can't get a camera up there. So I will mount it and then I will show you where it's mounted. I'm actually going to mount this in the exact same position on my Super Duty that I have it mounted in my cruiser. All right, well, I'm inside the airplane right behind the access hatch, and you can see where I have it mounted there. You can see that how the rotation works of it. I can level it once I level the airplane, or if I need to make adjustments after it's flying, I can do that. And one of the things I wanted to point out is because this is mounted on the skin, and this is what I noticed in my cruiser, I noticed on the screen with the attitude indicator, it was kind of moving a little bit. And that is because this skin, when, it, when you're flying, it vibrates and moves. So what I did was I took one of these, these angles here like this, and I actually just put double-sided tape on it, and I put it kind of going from front to back like that, and that just stiffened up the floor. Um, you could rivet it if you wanted to, but I found that just putting double-sided tape on it works just as well. It's certainly not a structural piece. Uh, so that's what I'll do on here. I will just use double-sided tape and put an angle in there, and that stiffens the floor up where this is mounted and prevents it from vibrating. One more quick little thing I wanted to show you before I end this video is I have received my antenna cables from Steinair. I had to make these, so this is for the ADS-B, and it's got a 90 degree fitting there that goes to the antenna. And for the transponder on the other side, I have the same thing, a 90 degree elbow, and then the antenna cable going to the transponder. So that's kind of cool. The antennas look pretty good in there. Well guys, I like to keep these videos to 15 minutes or less, so I am going to end this video here. I think the next thing I'm going to work on is the torque tube because that's a lot quicker and easier than mounting the horizontal stabilizer. So I'll do that next, I'll cross it off the list and then on to the horizontal stabilizer after that. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I do appreciate you guys uh, you know, watching and hitting the thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not done that yet and you wanna follow the rest of the progress on the airplane. Other than that, I'll see you on the next episode.